We started out with a 250 bar fill on the main bottle. Regulator pressure, which is fixed at 75 bar, is still here. We've shot six magazines, which is 132 shots, all at full power. We're about 180 bar left in the main bottle. I think we've probably still got as many shots again then. Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. This is the FX Dynamic, which is the dynamic version of the Pantera. Now this is designed more for hunting environments and it is available in multiple formats. I could say go on the FX website because it has all the details about it, but actually it doesn't. This seems to be a fairly specific model for the UK sub 12 foot pound variant. And this is in 177, it's also available in 22. The Dynamic Compact Takedown. So um, let's go through the details and tell you what I've actually found about this very rifle, what I've measured about it, what I've taken as information that I can tell you is fact because I can physically see it in front of me here now. One of the big things here is FX have called this shroud over the barrel. It's a it's a plenum basically. Um, slightly interesting because it doesn't seem to have a huge effect on velocity or energy figures whether it's on or off and um, the actual figures for consistency don't seem to change massively either but aside from that it does give the inner barrel a much stiffer um, physical nature and also the appearance suits the gun. We'll get more to this in a minute. Now you'll have seen it in use with the cap screwed off the front and I've been using a SAC sound moderator on it so I get super quiet sub 12 foot pound performance. I'd say this is a 177. Now this has got the AMP regulator and it's also got the smooth twist barrel liner. So some, that's fairly familiar to a lot of FX users. Looking at more of the details about it, you've got a 20 MOA Picatinny rail. And on the left side, we've got regulator pressure, which on this sub 12 set about 75 bar and the actual fill bottle pressure, which goes up to 250 bar max fill. I've been shooting it from 250 and I've had 10 magazines worth, which is 220 shots, more about in a minute, 10 magazines, 220 shots until I've got down to this point here. It's about 130 bar max pressure. That's where you do start to notice the power of the actual projectile drop off. But as I say, that is giving me 10 magazines, which is 220 shots. Now the FX website actually says the magazines are 21 uh, shot capacity in, in 177, which I physically found are not. They're actually 22 shot capacity. So just be a little bit wary of that. Now, being a sub 12 UK version, we have got a power adjuster here, which is the macro one. The micro one isn't in operation because you can't you know, adjust this excessively and take it outside legal parameters. On the underside, there's a Foster filler adapter. You get a Foster connector with that. No problem filling with that at all. It's very quick and easy. And it's also got an adjustable trigger, so you can adjust the trigger position. You can also adjust the first and second stage on the trigger, but it does say that adjusting those may void your warranty. So just be cautious of that. So going back to the magazine, now, of course, once I open this bolt, this magazine's empty. So once I take the bolt out, the probe will come out and the magazine will click empty and I can't actually pop that back in. But essentially, the magazine's now been made slightly larger, slightly thicker, so you can fit up to a 13 millimeter slug in terms of the length of them, because overall, this rifle's available in 177, 22, 25, 30 and 35 cal. And in some of the FAC variants, you can go up to about 200 foot pounds. So this is definitely 
the small, super compact UK spec hunting version. Uh, magazines load as normal, you turn this all the way around, drop a single pellet in this point here and it will stop it rotating back, then you just fill them all back up, let the spring pressure go, which it obviously will stick, put the top back on, oh, and then just click it closed. And with the bolt open, that will slide back straight into the magazine, pock it there, close the bolt and goes forward. I can't close the bolt now because that's obviously unloaded and it won't slide through. I just remember that is cocked. These do feel a little bit better made than previous FX magazines. There's a little bit more sort of meat in the polymers and the fit and finish on them just seems a little bit more precise and there's not as much evidence of moulding discrepancies and I have to say that this 177 one, although small, it has given me 100% perfect performance which isn't always the case in all FX magazines but that one has been good so I can't criticise that at all. It's side lever cocking, you can see the side lever there, and that can actually be swapped to the other side of the rifle if you want it on the left side. And then the safety catch is here above the trigger, fire and safe. Now this is actually technically cocked now, so I'm gonna safely discharge this rifle. I know it's not loaded, just into the sandbag there. Um, so that is absolutely fine. Now, one of the other elements about this being a takedown rifle, we've got a buddy bottle on the back, it's 480 cc's that buddy bottle, if I remember correctly and you can actually twist this off and completely swap it. You'll get a slight bleed of air as it just comes off, similarly when you put a new one on, but essentially you don't lose a huge amount of capacity. Now, the recoil pad here actually all fits on, clamps over the bottle. Length of pull as it arrives is actually 400 millimeters from the trigger to the recoil pad, which is 15.7 inches, quite long. And because it's quite high here in the cheek piece because it was on the bottle, a little bit more about that in a second. You can extend this further, you undo the clamps there and there is this little carbon fibre bar that you can just see there, it gives you about another half inch of extension. But of course with these four clamp screws here, you can move the whole assembly slightly on the bottle, forwards and backwards and of course rotationally if you want to you know, adjust to your shoulder position. The recoil pad at the back, it is rubber and it will slide vertically and lock in place just to suit your position where exactly you want it. These are all polymer sections here. It's an aluminium bottle and the, the rifle itself is all CNC machined aluminium to a very high standard. So let's talk about the ergonomics, the things that aren't in the brochure now. Overall length is 804 millimeters or 31.7 inches. Overall weight is 3,125 grams or 6.9 pounds. The barrel is 400 millimeters long, which is 15.7 inches. Length of pull is 400 millimeters, which is also 15.7 inches. Now, what strikes me about this rifle is, yes, it looks very complicated, but it's one of the most simple FX I've seen. I kind of like the fact it's not super adjustable. That is because it's a sub-12 and not the FAC spec, which is more common to the European or overseas in, in America, for example. But what it does allow is it just allows a nice, simple hunting point and shoot rifle. Although you've got 23 settings here for power level, I don't think anybody's going to venture below 12 foot-pounds in the UK. Uh, I don't remember the figure off the exact top of, the top of my head exactly, but it will show you on the um, FX Chronograph readout what power it developed. Absolutely set up as factory with these various different pellet types. What is a huge deal about this is it's one of, the, although it looks quite angular and mechanical, it's got a nice rubberized AR-15 grip, but it's phenomenally comfortable to shoot because you don't have the big buddy bottle underneath. The Arca rail on the underside of the forend, it's also got M-Lock 2, means your hand fits really close to the barrel, within, which is within the plenum, and that is fully stiff. You can remove this outer sleeve if you want to, and it shows you there's a disc at the front with an O-ring on it, it's all greased and it's all similar, and it all screws on at the back end here and locks tightly in position, so that is giving the barrel as well as the plenum, it's giving it additional physical support. And as I said, you can take the cap off at the front and put a moderator on, which does have significant noise suppression as well. But that sympathetic design element of it means that your hand, if you're shooting from a prone position, your hand is really close to the barrel and it makes the gun fundamentally incredibly stable. Without the buddy bottle underneath, which will be sort of this size, 
your support is, you know, maybe two, three inches, 76 millimeters closer to the barrel. So you haven't got that same rocking effect with it. And when you're shooting off your elbows prone in a very fast, reactive, dynamic sort of hunting environment around the farm or whatever, you are straight on it and it's incredibly comfortable. From that shooting position, as again you can see in the video, your fingers are just a flick away from the loading handle here and it is super smooth and it clicks very surely into position. You have got 20mm away on the rail which I don't think is going to matter very much to sub 12 shooters but if you are into the bigger FAC versions that has got the incorporated ability to shoot at greater distances. The trigger is incredibly precise, it's a two stage unit and it breaks at 337 grams which is 12 ounces but it is, as I said, adjustable. There's a detailed manual with it and it does show you how to do that but do beware of the actual warnings it gives you in the manual. In a dynamic situation when you are hunting, dynamic in that you're hunting, static obviously in the fact you want to stay still while you are shooting but you can stay on this rifle, you can operate the trigger incredibly easy and you can recock the rifle with the least disturbance possible just because it's got those excellent ergonomics. Now the cheek piece is quite high, it's quite bulky, so you do need to roll your head a little bit to get perfect scope alignment. But because the magazine fits underneath the scope, and depending on what scope you're using, it might be directly under the saddle like this to get eye relief correct, you are going to use what I would term slightly artificially high scope mounts. But Going back to the sort of complementary design factors, having that scope higher complements the cheek piece layout because actually it's one of those rare guns where you do need to lift the scope to get the best alignment. So you can, rather than tuning the cheek piece, you can almost tune your scope height with the scope mount. And again, going back to the forend, you've not got this massive amount of distance here spreading your hand from the barrel. Your hand is up close to the barrel for the support. Similarly, if you are using it in an Arca rail in a tripod or something like that, or with an Arca bipod. The rifle is totally ambidextrous to shoot, so even if you've got the lever on the right hand or the left hand, whichever is your normal preference, it's totally simple to swap it to the opposite side if that's the best support you've got for that particular shot in a hunting scenario. Now you can see the results on paper shooting the rifle from consistent test conditions. Um, all the groups were shot at 25 metres and it did get better when it was sort of worn in and a little bit more leaded up inside the barrel. I went through various pellet types from between 7 and 10.34 grains and unsurprisingly the JSB exact heavy Diablos at 10.34 grains were the best on paper. Now you can see this target here, that's quite impressive, that's a 10 shot group lower left and there's a 10 shot group lower right there. Those are sequential groups and I've got data for those from the chronograph as well. I do like the JSB Hades as well, they're the same weight, they'll give them the same energy and similar speed, um, but I did find they were slightly less accurate for the paper target testing. I've shot most of the FX rifles over the last couple of years. I've spent most of the time with a Crown in sub 12 in 2.2 calibre, but I've also done an awful lot with an Impact Mark III, which has been FAC, and I've shot that in pretty much every calibre you can get projectiles for. Those guns have been very effective, but I tended to favour the ergonomics of the Crown a little bit because I'm more of the hunter than the paper puncher, and I like the fact with the Crown you can shoot it ambidextrous. This one here does everything that crown would do in an even more compact, lightweight format. So it's very hard for me to say I do not like this one the most. But 
I've got very used to the power of FAC air rifles now, and I think in the longer term I'm going to try and get hold of one of these in at least 2.2 or 2.5 caliber FAC, which I think are probably the best options for the UK, and get some night vision ratting done with them. But that's not to say this isn't going to be great for shooting rats at slightly closer range, probably about 20 25 meters max for me, um, but also for shooting the feral pigeons inside some of the barns where the dynamic nature of this and the ability to move around, especially when you're aiming in you know different angles, different altitudes, that's where the ergonomics of this really show through. And I have to say, ergonomically speaking, this is my absolute favorite FX rifle so far, which is almost a little bit surprising because it looks quite angular. It looks quite sort of mechanical and not maybe that homogenous molded human sympathizer, but it is actually a very nice rifle to shoot. And I cannot get over the amount of stability you gain from having your hand up close to the barrel when you're in those prone shot scenarios. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell, and make sure you keep track of the regular uploads. Remember, your comments are what drive the popularity of the channel. And please go through to the end and check out the links. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.